constructed in honor of one of history's most brutal dictators, the Stalin Memorial in Prague led a short life between its completion in 1955 and its ultimate destruction in 1962, but during that time stood as a grotesque monolith to the cult of personality that surrounded the Soviet premiere, and how, in a somewhat cursed fashion, it brought about death to those involved in both its creation and its demolition. The man for which the monument was erected was Joseph Stalin, who was born under the name Josip Yugasvili on December 18, 1878, as the son of a Georgian shoemaker in what was then a province of the Tsar's Russian Empire. Josip, who would later change his name to Stalin, or Man of Steel, in 1912, notoriously opposing the Tsarist regime and frequently running into trouble with the law that saw him arrested on multiple occasions, all part of his gradual rise up the ranks of the Marxist Russian Social Democratic Labour Party, for which he became closely acquainted with the leader of the Bolshevik faction of this group, Vladimir Lenin, the latter of whom led the Bolsheviks to victory towards the end of World War I in 1917 during the October Revolution, establishing a new one-party communist state in Russia that overthrew both Tsar Nicholas II and the largely ineffective state Duma, or lower house of the governing Senate. Stalin, through manipulations and murder, eventually assuming leadership over the newly established Soviet Union in 1924, following Lenin's death. Stalin's position as state premier, leading to a series of five-year economic plans that would attempt to drag the largely agrarian and Victorian-era society of the former Tsarist Russia into the modern age with rapid industrialization and agricultural collectivization. The outcomes of which, while leading to vast technological leaps forward for the nation, such as the establishment of hydroelectric power generating stations, cost the people of the Soviet Union dearly due to food disruption that led to the infamous famine of 1930 to 1933 the most notorious of which was the Holodomor of Ukraine, during which between 6 and 9 million people died of starvation across the entire Soviet Union. Stalin's reign was also characterized by notorious paranoia, as he firmly believed that elements within his own party and the armed forces were plotting to overthrow him, which, aside from ordering the death of former Bolshevik party member and political rival Leon Trotsky in August 1940, led to a swathe of mass executions for high-ranking members of the Soviet government and military known as the Great Purge, during which over one million people were imprisoned, while at least 700,000 were executed, this move only serving to put the Soviet state into a highly volatile position by the time the government of Nazi Germany, led by Adolf Hitler, reneged on an earlier pact of non-aggression signed in 1939 and invaded the Russian homeland under Operation Barbarossa, codenamed after Frederick Barbarossa or Redbeard, a 12th century Holy Roman Emperor and German King. During 1941, the lack of experienced officers in the Soviet armed forces, combined with largely outdated weapons and disorganized defenses, meaning the Germans could gain massive quantities of Soviet land across an 1,800-mile front during a mere five months, and came within 14 miles of Red Square in the heart of Moscow during December of the same year, only for supply chain problems caused by the winter weather, in addition to Hitler's own lack of strategic experience and prioritization, meaning the Russian capital was never captured. With the German advance stalled, Stalin took the opportunity to counterattack, and throughout the course of the next four years was able to beat back the German invasion during what was known as the Great Patriotic War. His campaign against the Nazis characterized through vicious bloodshed, with casualty numbers that climbed into the tens to hundreds of thousands, and the annexation of those states which had been previously occupied by the Germans during their 1941 advance, including the Baltic nations of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, Bessarabia, North Bukovina, and Poland leading to the establishment of communist governments within these Eastern European countries that would provide a buffer between the Soviet homeland of Russia and the nations of Western Europe and occupied Germany that belonged to the capitalist allies of France, the United States and Great Britain. His continued distrust as to the place of the Soviet Union on the global stage, especially in comparison to his former allies of America and the British Empire, leading to the start of what was known as the Cold War, a prolonged period of political and military tension supported by the threat of nuclear Armageddon, following the development of devastating atomic bombs towards the end of World War II. As for Czechoslovakia during this period, the nation itself was the combination of former states within the wider Austro-Hungarian Empire, having declared independence in October 1918 during its collapse towards the end of World War I, Czechoslovakia remaining a sovereign state until 1938, when, under the Munich Agreement signed between Adolf Hitler of Germany, Neville Chamberlain of Britain, Edouard Deladier of France and Benito Mussolini of Italy, the Sudetenland, a part of Czechoslovakia where more than three million people of mainly German descent lived, was annexed by the Nazi government, leading to Slovakia declaring independence and large portions of the former nation falling into Hungarian and Polish control, the country of Czechoslovakia being reformed once again 
following the advance of the Soviet Union against the Nazi occupying forces during 1945, creating the Third Czechoslovak Republic, although the influence of the nation was still very much under the dictation of Stalin's government in Moscow, leading, inevitably, to the enacting of a coup by the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia, as supported by the Soviet Union, in early 1948, creating the Czechoslovak Socialist Republic. With the rise of the new communist government, which modelled itself after Stalin's own Soviet authorities in Russia, the same cult of personality which revolved around him in his homeland, as the figurehead of communism and victor against the oppression of Nazi Germany, rapidly found its way into Czechoslovakia, and following the establishment of the Czechoslovak Socialist Republic in 1948, which led to a wave of Stalinist terror and show trials, a great tribute was to be erected to the mighty Stalin within the Czechoslovak capital city of Prague during the same year, positioned strategically on the southern edge of Letnia Park, overlooking the Vltava River and the ornate Yakov Moss Bridge, the choice of sculptor for the celebratory monument being based on the results of a competition that would be entered by the finest architectural minds of the USSR. Eventually, the proposal of Otkar Svek, one of the nation's most important sculptors, won the competition, Zek having studied his craft as a pupil of the renowned Josef Vaclav Mizebek and Jan Storza, and had been a teacher of sculpture at the Prague Academy, as well as providing exhibitions in Venice, Paris and Philadelphia. His body of works including several monuments and figurative sculptures for architecture, the pinnacle of which was the motorcyclist Sunbeam, while his other famous pieces comprised a number of successful portraits of well-known Czech artists, Zvek reportedly being surprised when he was announced to have won the competition with his monument sculpture being generously subsidized by the Central Soviet Committee in Moscow for construction. To build the gigantic monolith, forced labor was brought in comprising of soldiers and workers deemed politically unreliable by the communist authorities, and were mostly made up of assigned opponents to the regime, namely academics and intellectuals who had been tasked with manual labor after denying them work in their chosen field, although by the beginning of the 1950s, Anyone who was believed to have fallen foul of the party, regardless of occupation or social rank, could end up as labor on the project, these workers being housed in a specially constructed concentration camp within Letnia Park itself, and was of a typical design for labor facilities for the period, comprising three wooden barracks with a capacity of 40 inmates each, who were housed eight to a room with simple kitchen facilities provided, although it had neither heating or bathrooms, these barracks being positioned around a central square in which daily roll calls would be undertaken, the system of control within the camp, allowing them to consume alcohol, and workers were given a minimum wage for their toils, as well as being able to leave the camp for occasional family visits, though fundamentally, they had little choice but to serve on the units, which came under the title of Auxiliary Technical Battalions. Started in early 1949, the construction of the monument progressed for a grueling five and a half years, and would comprise a reinforced concrete structure faced with 235 granite blocks, weighing approximately 17,000 tons and costing 140 million crowns to complete, the structure being 51 feet high and 72 feet long, with Stalin positioned front and center, while flanked on either side were two soldiers, two members of the intelligence service, two farmers, and two factory workers, the construction of the monolith requiring not only the building of the sculpture itself, but also major alterations to the slope at Letnia, leading up from the Yekov Most Bridge, including the creation of a unique staircase running up to the base of the monument, and the proposed construction of a mausoleum that was to be built beneath Stalin's feet, though this facet of the design was never realized, the finalized piece being the largest group sculpture in Central Europe upon its completion on May Day 1955, although Otkar Svek, the statue's progenitor, would not live to see the unveiling of his creation, as only days prior to its completion, he committed suicide out of sheer disgust and disgrace for what he had designed, and now his name is forever associated with the celebratory monument, regardless of his other artistic works. However, the presence of the monument was distinctly out of taste even long before its final unveiling, as on March 5, 1953, Stalin had succumbed to a stroke at the age of 74, and after a bloody and protracted struggle for power between various factions, Nikita Khrushchev, Stalin's former first secretary of the Communist Party of Ukraine, rose to the rank of first secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, and immediately began a system of denouncing the former dictator under what was known as de-Stalinization, removing all aspects that had been developed to reinforce the strict cult of personality that had developed around him, as well as revealing to the people of the world the vicious tyrant he actually was, responsible for overseeing mass repression, ethnic cleansing, wide-scale deportation, hundreds of thousands of executions, and famines that killed millions, the gigantic monument to Stalin in Prague being immediately lambasted upon its creation for its noble representation of one of history's greatest monsters, and due to the nature of the statue, with the other figures present in its design being stood behind Stalin himself, 
the sculpture quickly gained the derogatory nickname of Q for Meat. As de-Stalinization continued into the 1960s, the presence of the sculpture as an ode to the now-hated Soviet dictator became more and more incongruous with the medieval centre of Prague, and thus, on the orders of Khrushchev himself, he ordered that the sculpture be removed from the city's skyline by whatever means necessary, thus leading, in the spring of 1963, to the demolition of the structure with around 1,800 pounds of dynamite, although the removal of Stalin's monument does lead to many notorious rumours as to various tragedies that befell those associated in its destruction, with the Czech demolition leader in charge of disposing of the monolith apparently being decapitated by a piece of flying stonework from the explosion, with his body tumbling headless into the Vlatyava, while after the statue had been destroyed, its crumpled remains were paraded through city streets packed with crowds of cheering citizens aboard a convoy of lorries for depositing out in the countryside, the curse of Stalin's monument extending to the lead lorry driver of the procession, as within a year he was reportedly killed in a road traffic accident outside Prague. Today, the plinth on which once stood the celebratory monument is now largely dilapidated and rotting, while standing on the former site of the sculpture is the Prague Metronome, a 75-foot-tall functioning metronome that was erected in 1991 and is arguably the largest metronome ever constructed, operating at four beats per minute. Communism in Czechoslovakia, after five decades of Soviet influence, eventually being disposed of in November 1989 following the Velvet Revolution, while the unified nation of Czechoslovakia itself would peacefully split into the two sovereign states of the Czech Republic and Slovakia on January 1, 1993. The former plinth, created originally as a grotesque shrine to the rule of a tyrant, now providing a popular meeting spot with spectacular views over one of the most visited and historically significant cities in Europe, its panoramic vista over a bright future being a stark contrast to its former intention as a reminder of a dark past.